Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Joining me next in America's favorite pharmacist segment brought to you by Mary Ruth's Organics. We're joined by our newest and weekly contributor, pharmaceutical influencer, Phil Cowley. Phil is a pharmacist that goes by the handle Phil's My Pharmacist with over 2 million followers throughout social media. He has over 20 years of experience, owns and runs Cash Valley Pharmacy in Logan, Utah. He's passionate about educating people on how to make informed decisions about their health and well-being. He's known for his ability to make even the most complex medical information accessible and entertaining. Today, he joins me to share his thoughts on Ozempic and Munjaro manufacturers testing weight loss shots for kids as young as six years old who suffer from obesity. Pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly signaled its plans to start clinical trials with Munjaro for kids ages 6 to 11. Novo Nordisk, the company that makes Ozempic, reported that it's in phase three of testing Sexenda, a version of its drug for kids ages as young as 6 to 12 years old. Now, keep in mind that the rates of obesity for children in the U.S. have tripled since the 1980s, affecting close to 15 million children nationwide. This is nearly one in five kids, data directly confirmed by the CDC. I worry about children because of their developing bodies. Unfortunately, most of these studies are shorter term. And as a mom, I will always advocate for longer term studies to convince me of drug safety. The first line of treatment should be to focus on changing lifestyle and behavior. And I know for a fact that every physician and parent should want to take the safer route. Welcoming now to the show, in America's favorite pharmacist segment is our regular contributor, pharmaceutical influencer, Phil Cowley, chatting child obesity and his thoughts on is Ozempic safe for kids? Welcome to the show, superstar. Hey, thank you, Zen. This is awesome to be here. I'm super excited. This is a great topic, too. Great topic, trending. Everyone is is weighing in with an opinion on this. So you, you've, we've all heard that Eli Lilly is planning clinical trials with Munjaro for kids age six to 11, Phil, and Novo Nordisk is in phase three now, as I said, of testing Zexenda, the version of Ozempic for children age six to 12. Given your expertise, what are your initial thoughts on this development? I think we're going to have to come up with a new name for this eating disorder that we're giving these kids, because right now they lose 17% of their weight in the first year. They start feeling better, but they regain two thirds of that weight back. So what happens to a child when they lose that much weight and then automatically rebound it. So my first thoughts are absolutely that these children have obesity issues that we need to treat the obesity, but kids have not and never have been small adults. They have to be treated completely different and getting them to lose weight that they're inevitably going to gain back or they have to be stuck on these shots for the rest of their life is not a good path. Yes, and to your point, a team of clinicians, exercise scientists, pharmaceutical scholars, ethicists and even behavioral experts said in their commentary that glucagon like peptid one receptor agonists which we're talking about glp1 may be dangerous for children and this is a direct warning from researchers at university of california treating childhood obesity and type 2 diabetes with these injected medications may have unintended and adverse consequences in pediatric patients and this is coming directly from the scholars so you are right on the money when you when with that commentary phil yeah they say will there was no there's no doubt in their mind you also have to consider that the studies are being done right now there was one that had 83 kids enrolled in it and one less than 100 and they're being monitored by not just clinicians that work with the drug, they're also being monitored by their pedi pediatrician. They've been given coaches to help them lose weight, and they have nutritional support with the nutritionist. Once we approve this through the FDA, kids that are going to get it will not have that team behind them. I mean, fentanyl wasn't addictive when it was inside the clinical setting and they had doctors on them 24 seven. What happens when this gets into the general public and they hand it out with no support at all for these kids? You're right. So let's go back to the natural approaches. I mean, of course, the direct correlation 
is your child's gut health, right? It is closely linked to their physical growth and development, as well as the function of their nervous system, their immune system, and metabolism. And that's important. So important to start those probiotics early. I say, I've been using uh, Mary Ruth probiotic for my eight-year-old daughter daily, and have been doing so for the last six years. It's a tremendous difference in her overall health. Uh, so I always will advocate for that natural way. But when you go back to this ozempic conversation and debate, could this new class of medication, Phil, in fact, benefit children with morbid obesity and type 2 diabetes? I mean, what are your thoughts on the first line of treatment for childhood obesity? The first line of treatment is metformin. And metformin fails about one out of four times. Metformin is the very first thing they try. And it's the only other one that has good clinical studies. They haven't even studied anything else. They've got metformin. They've got a few other GLP-1 type drugs. And then after that, they go to insulin. So the treatment modalities for kids are very limited. And so having a new treatment for kids would be excellent. And I do think that in a true type 2 diabetic situation in which all the other steps, you've got yourself a clinician that is really on top of it. They get to check all their hormones, make sure that they don't have any chance of thyroid. I mean, GLP-1 drugs cause thyroid cancers and they have good clinical help. There is a sure place for GLP-1 in those kids that truly have type two diabetes. The concern is just like happened in the adults, what happens when they approve it and they just start giving it to kid, the kids that are obese and not those that have two type, type two diabetes. That's where the real concern will come in. Yeah. And my major concern to your point, and that's such a valid concern of yours, but even on top of that is the unbalanced and inappropriate reduction in calories or energy intake associated with these weight loss drugs. Like unlike in adults, children and adolescents need energy and sufficient calories, not only for physical activity, but for growth and development. And the balance of a proper diet plus movement influences a child's growth and health across their lifespan. And any changes in that balance can have negative consequences much later in life. So optimal diet and exercise helps build bones during childhood. For example, this lessens risks of osteoporosis and bone fractures later in life. And so when you're looking at these drugs that are just quick fixes, all of this that I just talked about becomes obsolete. And on that note, are there ways, Phil, that parents can help optimize our kids' digestive tract without having to override their little systems? I mean, is there a way to activate and naturally produce the ozempic effect? The cool thing about metformin is it affects the GI flora, the bacteria in the stomach, three to 300 times more than it does our own cells. It's, actually very, it's very well documented that um, metformin, which is the first line treatment, helps our cells in our stomach, the bacteria in our stomach, do their jobs better. And that ends up feeding like the cell walls. And then that cell wall, especially the first 10 inches of the small intestine, that's where you find those L cells, the only cells in our body that produce naturally GLP-1. So when you start to consider that kids with diabetes have celiac disease at almost a 10 times higher rate, and the bacteria is where the metformin works, if you were to add the right kind of a bacteria, bacteria, so inside the Mary Ruth probiotic, they use this B subtilis, and it's not a subtle bacteria because what it does is it is very, very good at breaking down long chain fatty acids and making them small. And those small chain fatty acids feed those L cells. So with the right bacteria in there, not only are we protecting the gut wall, reducing inflammation, but we're also feeding the cells in our bodies that want to produce the GLP-1 instead of artificially overrunning it, giving them shots. It's like we're preparing to get the wheelchair before they've even put on their seatbelt because there's no car crash yet. It's mind boggling to me that they're pushing this type of heavy drug uh, on children because even the CDC shows kids may have gained weight twice as fast during the pandemic. Fine, I get that. And earlier this year, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with a new guidance that includes medication and surgery as suggestions for patients 12 and up suffering from obesity. These weight loss shots can cost up to $1,500 and may not be covered by insurance. I mean, the studies are scheduled to last a few years, but this is so premature. And the fact that we're, we're trying to cure childhood obesity with this type of band-aid is uh, it's very scary to me because now this brings us into 
what you've been talking about all along, Phil, overuse. We all know with big pharma comes the potential risk of overuse and dependency and the potential for abuse of these medications by kids and teens, to your point, with eating disorders and those involved. Think about that. Competitive sports like wrestling, martial arts, gymnastics and ballet could be inevitable. I mean, the benefits of long term use in youth need to be weighed against cost and the impact on quality of life. I say a careful study is definitely needed. What are your thoughts? I think that there is a whole room of drug reps someplace partying over the idea that they can sell this so often. I mean, these are the same individuals. The Novo people took hot, took the prices of insulin, started out at $24 until the government got in and said, we can't have people dying without their insulin. They, they jacked that price clear up to $300. These are the people who we're trusting our children with. Big farmers never been trusted to do anything but to make money. And they haven't looked at the long-term studies. What they're looking at is a new market share. And so I would absolutely say if we treat little kids like they're adults, we're going to end up having lifelong problems with these children. We have to have a better study, a longer study. We even need a longer study with adults. What happens if we burn out our own L cells and we never produce any of our own natural GLP-1? You start your kid at eight on a shot, and now here they are, 40, 50, 60 every week having to have it. And the efficacy will drop over time. So you'll have to keep raising doses, which keeps raising prices, which keeps making money for big pharma. So I guess if that's what you want to do, this is a great meth way, meth way to go. So you know, you go this mechanism, it's a great mechanism to go is to make them a lot more money. I just, I don't trust big pharma and I don't trust the study because 83 kids for a year and a half, that doesn't tell us anything. 83 kids. Wow. And they have the nerve to come up with this as, as a cure-all. I mean, pediatric obesity has become an epidemic because of the lack of places for kids to play and exercise safely. And the wide availability of cheap, high-calorie fast foods, of course, compounds this. But this ep epidemic has specifically hit underrepresented minorities, especially hard. And as drug manufacturers develop oral forms of the medication, this may reduce oversight and definitely lead to abuse. It's, it's a setup for failure especially for those communities. Yeah, it's it's highly concentrated in female patients, girls by the age of 12, up in lower socio socioeconomic standings and in ethnicities that are um, underserved and underprivileged. So if you start giving them this without any support, it's only going to lead to longer term problems. We have to be able to support them having healthy lifestyles, give them good foods to eat, give them places to go, support them in another way. And I would really think that when you're spending $20,000 a year on a medication, I think the states could find a better way to treat that money so these kids have a real shot at their future. Right. That's the that's the humanity in, in you speaking. But Big Pharma isn't about seeing things like that. I mean, to your point. News about GLP-1 RA agonists has infiltrated social media outlets. It's being spoken about by celebrities, fashion models, and influencers. So it's reasonable to assume that as access becomes easier, more children will engage in unsupervised use of this GLP-1 RA agonists in order to facilitate reaching societal beauty standards. And I think it's headed all in the wrong direction. Well, you know, they're already ordering all the knockoffs that can come out of China without a problem. They're not really being regulated on the way in. And so now they don't even really know what they're using. But it's already shown that they that the kids are the ones that are ordering all the knockoffs out of China. So you've got young kids already using it with a product that's not regulated. And we're talking about it as if it's a savior. Every headline is this is game changer. It's fixing everything. They've spent over $500 million advertising in the last nine months. Wow. So kids are now being told to do this. So they're ordering this stuff off of China and we don't even know what will happen to them. And there's not really any regulation on these knockoffs at all. So all of this infuriates me as a mom, of course, you as a dad, you as a dad and a pharmacist uh, as well. But right now, I'm, I, there's one particular study, and I think we talked about it together in 2017, that shows kids grow faster with vitamins containing the proper level of trace minerals, uh, especially zinc. So I know that we're big proponents here and big, big fans of Mary Ruth's supplements. Talk to me about this. So even with kids that are overeating and obese, we find that their trace minerals and their zinc levels, their magnesium and their manganese le levels are too low. And that has a lot to do with gut inflammation. 
when you take a good formulated vitamin, it can't just be one off the shelf, one that covers all of the stuff that they need. Most pediatric vitamins only carry about 40% of the trace of minerals and vitamins. They actually saw in that six month period, they actually saw the kids grow almost at twice of a rate as the kids who didn't take it, which tells us even when a kid is obese, they could be missing something inside their diet, especially kids like mine that I had to fight to eat anything but chicken nuggets every meal. They just had to fight them. And so when you're looking at a child, a simple, just get a vitamin and a probiotic, and let's see if we can make these kids happy and healthy before we throw a $1,200 shot at them, maybe a better mechanism. All right. Bottom line, Phil, would you give this to your child? If, if my child was borderline going on insulin, I would have to reconsider it. But that would be yeah. the only time I'd even consider it. Right. Well, it was a pleasure chatting today. Thank you so much for your insight. I had so much fun covering this with you. Uh, and a big shout out to Mary Ruth Organics out there. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you. The Food and Drug Administration and health regulators in Europe have only approved GLP-1 receptor agonists for use in people ages 12 and up. That speaks volumes. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, nearly one in five children aged six and up do suffer from obesity. Now, Novo Nordisk is expected to report that sales of Ozempic generated $3.5 billion in revenue in the third quarter of this year alone. Lots of money involved in big pharma. That was America's favorite pharmacist, Phil Cali, pharmaceutical influencer. The segment was brought to you by Mary Ruth's Organics. Phil is the founder of Cash Valley Pharmacy in Logan, Utah. You can definitely check him out on the gram at Phil's My Pharmacist and head to maryruthorganics.com or check them out on the gram at Mary Ruth Organics. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this.